Now let's see the section of the pons at the upper level. Here within the basilar part of this section, we have the same features like that of the section at the level of the lower part of the pons. And these are the bundles of the corticonuclear and corticospinal tracts. Along with these tracts, we find some pontine scattered nuclei and this pontine nuclei provide the corticopontocerebellar tract via this middle cerebellar peduncle. From this pontine nuclei, the transversely running fibers, these are the corticopontocerebellar tracts. So the features within the anterior basilar part of the pons, it is same like that of like that at the level of the lower part of the pons. While in the tegmentum, we find one small fourth ventricular cavity and on each side of this fourth ventricular cavity, we find the superior cerebellar peduncle on each side. The superior cerebellar peduncle will communicate the midbrain with the cerebellum. Along with these structures, we find the medial longitudinal fasciculus in the midline, tectospinal tract and the rubrospinal tract on each side from dorsal to medial side. And these structures we have already seen in the lower part of the pons. Along with this, we find the lemniscae from medial to lateral side and this lemniscae, these are the medial lemniscus and most laterally there is the lateral lemniscus which we have already discussed which is the upward continuation from the trapezoid body and the cochlear nuclei which is concerned with the auditory system and just lateral to this medial lemniscus we find one more new lemniscae that is the trigeminal lemniscae and this trigeminal lemniscae it is the continuation of the trigeminal system. This trigeminal lemniscae, it is the part of the trigeminal system which carry the proprioceptive, which carries the proprioceptive as well as the fine sensations from the face. And just lateral to this trigeminal system lemniscae, we find the spinal lemniscae. So from medial to lateral side, we find the medial lemniscae, the trigeminal lemniscae, the spinal lemniscae and most laterally there will be the lateral lemniscae. And along with these structures we find at the level of the main principal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve, this section at the upper part of the pons which passes through the main principal pontine nucleus of the trigeminal nerve which is actually situated just lateral to the motor nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. So this is the principal pontine nucleus of the trigeminal nerve and smaller just medial to it and that nucleus it is the motor nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. And from this nuclei the trigeminal nerve will passes and coming out from the brain stem. So all these are the internal structures of the pons. Along with all these structures at both the level of the pons, we find the reticular formation at all the other side other than the special features within these sections. So the this white empty spaces what we are seeing here, these are filled with the reticular formation. So this is all about the section and the internal structure of the pons. Now when we see the blood supply of the pons, it is mainly supplied by the smaller branches from this basilar artery and these are the pontine branches and the one more artery it is going to supply this pons that is via this anterior inferior cerebellar artery.
so when the vascular injury occur to the pons via this pontine branches or the anterior inferior cerebellar artery injury it will lead to the development of one syndrome and that is called as the muller gobbler syndrome and within this muller gobbler syndrome there are few important structures are getting affected and this will lead to the symptom to the patient this much area it is going to mainly affect the muller gobbler syndrome and this area having the seventh nerve within it and the injury to the seventh nerve will lead to the ipsilateral facial parts palsy the involvement of the sixth cranial nerve will lead to ipsilateral medial squint and the involvement of this cortico nuclear and the cortico spinal fibers will lead to the contralateral hemiplegia along with this mullard gobbler syndrome one more vascular syndrome occur to the pons when this ventral portion only is affected and not the lateral portion and which will spare the seventh nerve and having the involvement of the sixth nerve as well as the cortico spinal tract and when this vascular involvement occur the syndrome it is called as a raymond syndrome in this syndrome the ipsilateral medial squint occur due to the involvement of the sixth nerve as well as the contralateral hemiplegia occur due to the involvement of the cortico spinal and the cortico nuclear tracts so there are two important syndromes concerned with the vascular injury to the pons so this is all about the pons hope you understand well thanks for watching